What's going on, guys? This is the Magical Bro Transformation Podcast. I am your Magical Bro host, Noonie, joined by my Magical Broettes, Juan and Mike, compatriots, compatriots, uh, co-hosts. Hello. Yeah. I'm in yeah. the room. He's in the room. This is the first podcast that we're actually going to do together, together all in, all or, in one, well, the three of us. The, the, sec- the, the second, second one. one, but this is the first one that where Juan, Mike, and I are actually in the same room with where we have like an entire set of people together in the same time yeah with uh, actual mic stands and <laughs> um, semi proper setup semi yeah oh, the, our wonderful studio the it's gorgeous in here yeah. I'll, I'll, it's the exact same one that i posted <laughs> but i'll take another picture with all the mic stands so it looks all professional so or looks bullshit nice. yeah moving on but yeah moving on if you're new to the podcast uh, basically, what we do is a pretty generic concept that, you know, I was like, nobody else is doing this for some reason, so let's do it. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, they're not doing it now. There are some that did it in the past, but now I've moved on to different things. But we just watch an anime. Uh, I've made it so that we... What's the word I'm looking for? Each week, it's a different... Each week, it's different. One, one week, it'll be popular... And then another week, it'll be something somewhat more obscure, not as well known. Yeah. And today, you're stumbling onto the popular week, where we will discuss Fudi Kuri, Fuli Kuli, FLCL. Yeah. Ooh. And what we do is just watch the anime. Um, a lot of the time, it's going to be something that we've already watched, or at least one of us has already watched, and we're going to watch it for either a second third or you know fourth time or whatever i don't know how many times I've seen this no anime. nobody knows how many times God, <laughs> they've seen footy i mean like this this is one where you can't really say oh i haven't ever seen that like i mean most people that have seen, watched anime at any given I mean, even people that don't watch any anime now have most likely seen this in their adolescence yeah and essentially uh after watching it we'll uh, give it our very deep analytical analysis or you know we'll, we'll just talk shit about it and rate it at the end, you know, see what we thought about it, see if, um, seeing it now, if it's any different than we when we had seen it before, since um, I feel like a lot of the stuff that we'd watched, uh, we did when we had a lot more time, like when we, when we were teenagers, but we didn't have jobs and we didn't do all that stuff. True. Yeah. But, uh, I digress. This is the first anime that, uh, uh, another first for us that we've actually all watched um, together in the same room, <laughs> in one in one sitting. In one sitting, <laughs> since it's only six. It's episodes. only six episodes. Yeah. More to come. More to come. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so, if you've never seen Fudi Kuli, which I'm assuming if you're like m- maybe right now you're a teenager, there's a possibility that you haven't seen it. But seeing as Adult Swim is coming with two more like six season six episodes six yeah. episode seasons uh you're i'm pretty sure they're gonna like spam the shit out of that on oh yeah they're gonna spam the shit out of the original one they're gonna probably show it like every saturday uh, hopefully i mean if they don't they're not losing money but losing like interest yeah they're, they're losing the possibility of people being interested in mm-hmm. seeing it yeah uh, mo- mostly new people since yeah. you know there there are a lot of young kids that don't know about anything that just get introduced. What to I can stuff. see them doing is probably doing a marathon of all the episodes up to the premiere of the first one. Yeah, so that's probably that. what they're going to be doing. Yeah. yeah, that or they're going to play an episode every week until they hit the. That that season. could also be a possibility. And yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't be the first time that they marathon fully coolly because I remember watching God, every no, single. You know, they, I, they've done it. Yeah, I've, I've got a VHS before. tape somewhere with like <laughs> all the episodes recorded. I have two VHS tapes. One of them I know is lost. And the other one I know is like at my parents' house somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Somewhere. But getting back, if you've never seen Fully Cooly, it revolves around the main character, um, Kota, right? Nauta. No, Nauta. There we go. Man. <laughs> and I thought I've seen it a lot of times. <laughs> Good job. Good job. But it, it revolves around this character, Nauta, who's just, you know, some kid just shitting around life, who has a. I guess you'd call her an adult friend. Or not adult, but like an older 17-year-old friend. She's a high schooler. She's a high schooler. She's a high schooler. And I mean, that in itself should like kind of explain itself as to the kind of relationship between 
a kid and a high schooler. And a high schooler. You know, it's obviously sexual. Obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they're, it, it's just basically about them two whenever this crazy lady gets introduced into their lives and uh, shenanigans ensue. You know, that's basically what it revolves around. And um, to start, how many times have you guys... I I mean, you know, I, I think we've already kind of went... I think we already covered this in the intro, but how many times do you think you've watched it? Watched the series? It's, in reality, I've watched it twice. Um, once was in college, because I was like, oh, I have all this free time, and the Hulu is, is, was free back in the day. <laughs> back in the day. When and, they, the day. and they had this list of anime. I was like, well... I have all this free time, uh, and then like I saw FLCL was in there, and I was like, ah, I want to see why people are talk about this so much. And I watched, and I was like, oh, okay. Hmm. And then the second time around, like I understand, I understood it a little bit more. Yeah, I've seen Fully Cooly like shit, like in all honesty, six or seven times. Hmm. I mean, it's not really a big number when you consider that it's only six episodes. Yeah. No. But it's like, I mean, I've seen it over the years. Like, I saw it, like, at least two or three times as a kid, and then a few more as a teenager, and then this is probably the first time I've sat through it and seen it as an adult since I've actually left high school. Mm. Now, did you watch it uh, over over the years when you watched it so many times? Was it with other groups of people, or is it just by yourself? I've only ever watched Fully Cooly twice with other people Mm. and one of them being last night and um the other time was as a kid with uh like a childhood friend of mine like we sat down and watched it during a marathon Mm. i've only also watched it twice or you know with people twice um i'd say over the years i've watched it maybe like five six times kind of like mike uh mostly whenever whenever i was a kid then maybe once when i was a teenager and that time was with um Actually, yeah, once when I was a teenager, then once with um, Mondo, whenever him and I lived together, and that kind of um, sparked his uh, disgusting decline into weeb essence. <laughs> into degeneracy. <laughs> to degeneracy. Um, because, you know, we're just like, hey, uh, what do we do? You know, we have this Netflix account. And he was like, well, what do you want to do? And I told him, oh, I want to watch some, some anime. And he was like, oh, I don't know. I'm, I don't really like that much anime. And all I've really seen is like Fooly Cooly and Dragon Ball Z and so you know, whatever. So I told him, Well let's let's start off with Fooly Cooly and see what we understand. And then you know, this time. But um when you watched it the first time or when you watched it as a teenager, were you able to understand any of the symbolism or like any of the you know, any of the deeper in quotes deeper meaning I mean, that was like there? I think, like, I, I tried to, I, because, of, like, I, I could understand, at least, that there was something there, and I knew they were trying to say something. It's just that, like, at the time, I didn't really have any perspective to actually, like, decipher what they were actually trying to say, and so I think I mistook it as, like, another, like, I, I felt like I got the message wrong, like, as a kid, uh, or a teenager, rather. I, like, kind of understood things incorrectly, or just not at all throughout mm. the thing, and so, yeah. I feel exactly the same, especially when I watched it with Mondo, because I told him, all right, Mondo, like, I had, I'd watched it before, so I told him, Mondo, Mondo, there's, like, shit riddled, like, there's symbolism riddled throughout this entire show, you know, there's, like, a, a deeper meaning through, like, most of this, and, it, like, it's not, it's nothing huge, but I know it's there, I can't tell you what it is, but I'll point it out whenever I see it, because I'm <laughs> this like, means this means something. something. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, like, even, like I said, I was in college, so I was in my early 20s, so I was practically a young adult, or an adult, and uh, I didn't get through all the symbolism at all, until, like, yesterday when we watched when i watched it the second Everything time around clicked. and then yeah, it was all just like <laughs> blaring in front yeah, of yeah, you yeah. Oh. Like, once you actually understand it like it feels like it's really sick because yes. i mean they're really simple lessons it's yeah just, like up until this point i felt like i was just retarded and hadn't <laughs> noticed it or understood it because like my mis my biggest misconception for the anime was that i had initially believed as a kid and as a teenager that this was somehow a coming of age story mm-hmm. when in fact it was actually the opposite it was the reverse, reverse coming, coming of, of age, age. It, it was basically like the big message of the anime was basically that you know to remain a kid while you can yeah and i had understood it from like another perspective because as a kid i I, like i think the reason i I misunderstood it was because i attributed it to my current 
um, or at the time, my current um, situation, which was that I wanted to grow up really quickly. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just rush into adulthood because I didn't, I had a lot of things going on as a kid and I didn't want to be a kid. I wanted to like, you know, be able to make my own decisions, do all sorts of different things as an adult. And so when I saw this anime, I had assumed that Naoto's position was something that like, I like I saw the his position, which was really similar to mine, and that like everybody's pushing you to act like an adult and stuff like that, and taking telling you to take responsibility and to be grown up and stuff like that. And so when I had seen it, I initially thought, oh, okay, well then, I mean, I guess what they were trying to say was that that's how you're supposed to be, mm-hmm. and that's you know that's how things are supposed to be for a kid and stuff. And mm-hmm. so growing up, I realized that was actually the opposite of the message that they were trying to instill. Mm-hmm. And. I mean, I, I can't tell you what I thought. The, <laughs> like, I, like I mentioned before, I knew that there was something there, but I just watched it to be entertained. Because, you know, up until, I guess, that point, I just kind of watched um, cartoons in general, just animation in general, just as, like, take it for what it is. Like, just, just watch it Let's and be entertained. <laughs> oh, God, the deep, the deep philosophies in Beyblade. Picking up speed, going up. Yeah, I don't know. Like when I watched it, I was like, eh, "It's okay." I I understand there's parodies because that the big the big ones was parodies like South Park and Ava Evangelion and, and all those. And I was like, "Okay, it's just an anime about parodies." And then yeah, a very meta anime. <laughs> yeah, that's what you would initially think. Yeah. yeah, and the second time I was like, "Oh, oh, <laughs> this is what it is." So yeah, yeah. Speaking of parodies, I didn't get like when I was younger. And when I watched it with Mondo, like I didn't catch as many as much shit as I yeah. did before, mm-hmm. because watching it with you guys, I was like, man, there's a lot of there's a lot of like tiny references to other anime. In the first episode alone, I think, or the second episode, there was a reference to Eva, yeah. and like just um, sentience and robots and like all that. All that yeah, shit. like they they constantly referenced uh, Mecha in general, and yeah. so yeah, like um, I believe the thing with Eva was that um. Because the father, now it's his father, he's a, um, a tabloid writer. And um, he was going on, like, this rant about, like, this pseudo-intellectual rant that you'd hear from anybody that was discussing, like, uh, modern times and how um, having a robot could be construed as, like, a symbolism for the modern society and the introduction of um, technology. And um, as he's ranting on and on about this, um, he's talking with uh, Haruko, and she's like, well, wh- why is he saying all this retarded shit? And he goes, oh, well, uh, he wrote a, um, a long time ago, he wrote a thesis about uh, the meaning of Evangelion. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And at the same time, I feel like they were, when he was doing that speech, they were at the, you know, also implying that he was talking about the anime itself because, you know. Yeah. Oh, just, yeah, like, yeah. Like, they, they they didn't constantly do it, yeah, but they, it, it was a reoccurring theme where they would reference the fact like, that they were actually anime characters. Yeah, and they just, they just break the four, fourth wall either just very like bluntly and sometimes kind of subtly just like if you caught it you'd be like ah i I see (laughs) what you're i see what you're doing there the only characters that really did it though were naota's dad and haruko herself like everybody else was under the assumption that they were normal people like naota was uh as far as i know in firm reality that he was just a normal person um I, I forgot where, but I think it was during the uh, scene where they're at the dinner and everything turns into a manga. Mm, yeah. um, he starts bringing up the fact that they're not anime characters. Yeah. And the dad's just, like, staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the manga, um, I know that you, you're you the one that remembers the most about this because you were talking about it when we were watching it. Uh-huh. Um, but you and I have read the manga. I've only read the second volume, but that was, like, uh, I was maybe 16. And don't remember a lot of it. But what are kind of some of the differences between the the manga and the the anime well the first book i mean it was for the most part similar um i think the second half the book that you got to read was where everything kind of completely took a different turn um it was mostly just like they elongated certain events and they changed like uh where certain things take uh, took place like with uh, nina mori the fight where her um medical mechanical robot spawned it didn't happen at the school. Um, if I remember correctly, something happens and uh, Naoto has to go chase her into the forest. And uh, that's when her robot activates and then he has to go fight her. And then they have this uh, touching scene after he defeats her uh, where they just kind of hang out until dawn. And um, as far as I remember, because um, it's been a little bit since I've actually read it myself. 
Um, she actually stays with the family for more than just a night um, versus in the anime where she stays just a night to kind of uh, get over the uh, the drama and all the scandals that are going on with her father. Um, who I believe they, they they never specifically stated what was going on, but it was I, I believe had something to do with an affair. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, so she's just hiding out there. And the irony of it all was the fact that Naoto's father was actually the one that published the article mm-hmm. that um, got her father into a lot of trouble to begin with. I remember that. Um, I don't. I have no idea what what was going on. I thought I thought it was an affair too. I'm pretty sure it's an affair. But um, I remember that they said that he was in trouble with the law somehow. And I don't know if like law in Japan is a lot different than you know it is here. And maybe like having an affair constitutes breaking the law. I but, have uh, no idea. It, it, it could have been something like a little bit higher, but you know. I mean, it could have been a multiple, a multitude of like scandals just bundled together, and it just happened to be that. Mm-hmm. I'm not entirely sure because her father was the mayor of the town, so I mean, there could have been multiple different things. What? Did, how did you guys feel about the different animation styles felt like um, in this show? Uh, well, going back to when I first watched it, and it was parodies. I thought it was it was alright. Like it. it it served the purpose of pointing out the parodies more blatantly <laughs> because of each anime uh, animation style. But yeah, I, I mean, for what it was, it, it was okay. I, I I thought it was uh, neat, like looking at the different art styles. Um, initially, like when I like the first few times I saw it as a kid and stuff, and again as a teenager. Um, I had seen the change in art styles as kind of just like an aesthetic kind of thing where it was like, oh, we're just switching it. Um, and while that holds true for a lot of the cases, some of the cases you could obviously tell that it was due to budget changing. And it wasn't so much that they didn't have the money to do it. It was more that they were shifting the budget because you'd see a really low quality scene followed by something that they clearly dumped all of the money on into in the, like in the very, in the very next few seconds. So, like, it, it wasn't bad. It was just them, you know, uh, correctly balancing their budget, I suppose. So, it, it, it looked good. And, you know, they managed to make the scenes look nice enough. Yeah, and now that you mentioned the, the whole budget shift, it's surprising to just thinking about how anim- like how the animation goes. Mm-hmm. The more money you put on one scene, that's the one that has the most frame rates and stuff. And, mm-hmm. I don't know, that's, that's kind of crazy for me that... Yeah, like, you could tell when the yeah. frame rate was upped and, like, when just the... And everything, like, yeah. everything was just on, like, maxed out and... Yeah, like, everything great. was... Mo- and then they just turned the dials back down when it was just the characters kind of hanging <laughs> out. Just talking. Like, the one that was most obvious to me was... Like, I even noticed it when I was a kid, but I, I just thought that it was just like, oh, they're just being goofy and silly. And But was when the... Um, when the black cat that, um... That one, I forget her name. The girl that uh, Naoto's 17-year-old friend found and that uh, the communication cat were just like, uh, rub, like oh, the black mommy. cat was just rubbing up against each other. And like when I saw that as a, as a teenager or as a kid, I was just like, oh, this is super weird. But, you know, it's just um, it's, it's meant to look weird or whatever. Yeah. But then seeing it now, I see that that was just like, some shitty like maybe filler frame that they probably put <laughs> and just to make um make room for the mag like the glorious entrance of uh of Kanti just like descending from the heavens with like the light blaring in your yeah. face and it, it was uh, an excessive use of uh... <laughs> there there was t- it was so much for nothing <laughs> yeah like I, it... i'm sure it it probably meant something in the anime it yeah. was probably something that I didn't catch, but well, I mean, I guess at the time that he descended, that was when um she was doing the fire starter stuff, right? Yeah, that was when she okay, looked so at him y- as yeah, a, I mean, as she a was god. yeah. So that entrance it was supposed to be grand, divine, and everything. So when she saw him descending from the sky, I mean, and then they used all that you know stuff to to pretty it up. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could just say it as like that was just his grand entrance, and that mm-hmm. was when she was wowed by this uh, supposed deity mm-hmm. and not retarded robot. <laughs> not, not retarded, not a retarded robot at all, yeah. with a box on the back of its head. <laughs> all right, so uh, I guess I'll probably I'm probably gonna get into some spoilers, but um, how do you feel about uh just the the story in general? You know, um, how to go coming and coming to Earth, trying to find the the pirate king. And um, just, like, using Naota to, I guess, try and bring out the Pirate King when in actuality, 
uh, he 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 was a portal for the Pyro King, mm-hmm. but he like there was no way that she can get the power because you know she had to in order to get the power she had to be the vessel for the power yeah like she had to actually like i I guess that was like the irony of it all that she was trying to find somebody to be a proper host um to like use the portal in their head to pull stuff out from there Mm -hmm. without realizing that um there was no like she had to have been the portal herself in order to hold adamus inside of her Mm -hmm. i mean it it was kind of because i mean at the end of the anime nobody really gets what they want no i mean that's really what that's really what it comes down to nobody nobody Nobody, nobody really won. Nobody got anything they wanted to get. Everybody and, ended up going home with empty handed. <laughs> and if if you wanna if you wanna give it a deeper meaning, you could just be like you could just say, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you do, you can't always get what you want. Yeah, I mean and that that, that really works for the show because I mean you have these different characters. You have Nina Mori, the school student, and she wanted her parents to show up to the uh, school play and she, I mean that's really all she wanted. She wanted the attention of her parents. Yeah, because, because they're going through all this bullshit. Yeah, they're going through all this bullshit and I'm assuming that it had been going on for quite a while, even before it was announced to the public. And so you have this kid that, you know, their attention craved for their parents and it's understandable. So she was acting out and well what happens is she her parents don't actually show up to the play but she kind of accepts that that like i mean shit's gonna happen yeah and so like i I think that was like um how do i put it like she's probably like the most grown up out of the cast despite having you know regressed for a little bit when uh the whole event happened with naota and the cat ears Mm -hmm. um and yeah like uh the scene with her you know with her fake uh sunglasses and stuff i i still hold that that has to do with the fact that like everybody is not fake but everybody has things that they lie about or like they always try to make themselves appear one way mm-hmm. but, um, are actually another but are actually another way. And I think hers are wearing this, the, the fake glasses with no lenses was a way of her, I guess, saying not only is, has she been pretending the entire time that, um, you know, nothing's going on and that she has this like prissy attitude um to cover up the fact that she's like really messed up on the inside but it also had to do with the fact that she's also pretending that she's okay to her parents Mm -hmm. so wearing the sunglasses i I, that was my interpretation of it Mm -hmm. and then everybody else had similar themes like naota was uh having to deal with um either trying to be an adult and everybody trying to push him to be an adult and then kind of and at the same time kind of living in the shadow of his brother in a way because of uh because of his older friend because of mommy yeah mommy that's her yeah, like, everybody was having problems. Like, Naoto's was, again, that, like, people were... Like, he had people left and right telling him what he needed to be. And mm-hmm. it had to do with uh, the fact that, like, everybody wanted him to be just like his brother, like, during the baseball game, where mm-hmm. they were like, oh, well, we have his brother, but he doesn't have any mm-hmm. skill at all. Yeah. So everybody wanted him to be like his brother, and then everybody also wanted him to grow up. They wanted him to take care of, uh, like, you know, the other people, like Mamimi, or stay with his dad to do different stuff. And, like, I feel like his dad was actually the only one that was actually allowing him to do whatever he wanted to, mm-hmm. but he was, like, he was uh, he was the only one holding himself back. Like, he was telling him that he needed to do this. Like, he was telling himself that he needed to stay mm-hmm. at that point. And so, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Mamimi's problems just... Uh you know just being obsessed with She's just with stuck her brother in the past. it's yeah. you know just like a lot of people you know just stuck in the past just stuck affixed with this one um this idea of being with this one person and they uh during her episode the the episode where she's lighting buildings on fire yeah um they allude to why she obsessed over him uh, which is uh, he saved, he her, saved from her from a fire. a fire that she may or may not have started. It's kind of ambiguous as to whether yeah, she. Did I'm leaning on the fact that she most likely started it. She probably She's, started she it. seems like a pyromaniac, mm-hmm. and so yeah. So like her thing was that yeah she was obsessed with his uh, with not his bro- older brother who eventually moved abroad to have a career in baseball. Um, what she doesn't realize until later in the episodes is that her brother's already got a boyfriend. And meanwhile, she's girlfriend, been... Girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, girlfriend. <laughs> she's been, like, clinging onto Naota, using him as, like, a replacement for his brother. Just, like, you know, just using him in place of him. Yeah. And um, he's, like... Like, been taking, kinda, taking out her, frust- like, sexual frustration. She's taking out her sexual frustration on Naota. And he kind of just accepts it um, because he believes that that's, like, I guess the right thing to do. And, yeah. well, um, yeah. Eventually, he finally breaks it to her that, I mean... He has a boyfriend. Or he, ah, I'm sorry. 
eventually Naoto breaks it to her that um, his brother already has a girlfriend in America, and so you he know got, he got himself a hot blonde. He got himself a hot blonde, <laughs> which is literally what which it is said literally on the what he says in a postcard to mm-hmm. to his brother. And well, I mean, at first, I you don't really think it affected her, but she snaps at that point. Yeah, and then, th- I mean. Yeah, that, that pretty that, much that's broke her. The breaking point. For yeah, her. that pretty much broke her, and that's when she started doing the fire. Oh no, actually, she was already doing the fires. What happens is she stumbles away and she drops the fire starter game, and then that's that's when Nata like puts all the pieces together at the fact that she was actually starting all the fires, mm-hmm. and that the evidence was right in front of him, but he didn't actually look at it. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's when he goes to try to, to try and find her and yeah. be like, "Hey, stop." Yeah. And um, shout outs to are- to Miguel. Uh, for making us watch uh, Kaiden Restaurant for because uh, <laughs> <laughs> later on in that episode um, when when Naota is looking for for M- Mamimi um, they like he he finds her and she's in the circle of uh, cigarettes with a headband on and two lighters on her head in place of you know candles, candles. and because I had seen Kaiden Restaurant and they discuss in one of the one of the episodes. One of the episodes, and I went out of my way, unfortunately, to look it up. To look it up. Uh, I, you can tell that she's trying to curse, you know, somebody, and you know, you'd Most assume that it's her brother. brother. Yeah, now it's his brother. And uh, I, I saw that, and I was like, my God, I, I get everything. everything so <laughs> the more you, the know. more you know, it's just, it's fantastic. It's, it, it all comes together, and so uh, yeah, that that actually mm-hmm. really helped. I was sitting there like, wow, something. Something useful came of this. Yeah, and then she explains how um, no matter no matter how much she tries to burn everything down, like the the ashes still remain. That she wishes that they would just blow yeah. away. Like she, it was an it, illusion to how she can't really forget anything. Yeah, like she can't she can't help but uh, obsess over over her brother as much as she wants to try. Which you know, um, if somebody makes a big impact on your life, it, it's pretty yeah, difficult it's, it's to, difficult to move them. on yeah. especially yeah. if it's something traumatic like definitely. that so hmm? oh no i said definitely oh yeah so um yeah it's it's, it's understandable how she, i mean i wouldn't go starting fires but i mean it's understandable <laughs> from like a psychological point of view i mean you know how the person acts varies greatly so there's that all right and i i feel like that's uh mostly we went over naota we went over mommy me we went over the dad, I guess. Anymore. Well, I mean, the yeah. dad's like, the dad's like, he's the he's not only he's not really the voice of reason, but he's like he's like a guide for Nauta. Yeah. It's just that Nauta never fucking listens to him. Yeah. He never listens to his dad, and his dad has very sound advice. But I guess that also goes with the fact that like he's still a kid, but he's trying to be an adult. Yeah. yeah. And so when he's receiving adult advice, he just ignores it because he thinks his dad's just being stupid. Yeah. When in fact his dad is like, I mean, come on. Yeah. If you th- well, if you think about it, his, the dad's personality is pretty goofy. And yeah, so yeah. I mean, I guess hearing that from like somebody like that, you wouldn't really expect that advice to actually be sound. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, that, that's understandable. I mean, you grow up with this guy; he's never serious or anything. Um, but I mean, it's still the fact like his dad had really sound advice. Like he was trying to tell him that he shouldn't be stressing himself out so much because that's what it boiled down to. Mm-hmm. It was just not uh, really bogging down on himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we had um, this other character. The uh, he doesn't really have a title. Oh yeah, the eyebrows. Eyebrows. Mis- I we got eyebrows. <laughs> he he doesn't have like a title or anything. But I mean, it's assumed he's like in some sort of like police force. Whether it's alien or whether it's homegrown is indeterminate. And um, yeah. An- another uh, blaringly obvious like uh, symbolic thing that they put on you know the eyebrows that I that I completely missed as a as a. A teenager and as a child mm-hmm. um but like i i never actually noticed that they went out of their way in the anime to explain to you like why he has the eyebrows on when i had watched it as a kid i thought it was just like a a character design like just, they just thought they just thought it looked cool or, or it looked goofy or funny or whatever yeah no it, it has it has a reason behind it i mean the yeah. way the reason he was wearing the eyebrows in the first place was to kind of like shield her shield him from her advances and such and also, in a way, emasculate himself. 
because uh, she kept telling him that he wasn't manly enough. Uh, you know, there's a lot of dick references over yeah. here. Yeah, there's. A, I mean, the the entire thing with the guitars and so with summoning yeah. the guitars with the weapons. I mean, you're the the quality and size of the guitar that you summoned uh, was directly related to your dick size in the show. Yeah. yeah. So they kept like, and up until uh, that point, like when she explained to him, like you got to be more. You know, you 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 keep trying to be more manly, like you you keep trying to be a, an adult and so grown up. And then she, you know, pulls out his little tiny guitar out of his head, and it's just like it's not even the headstock; it's just a little a little like piece of flesh. And she's just like, man, you're just you're not you're not good enough, and all this and all yeah. that. Actually, thinking about that, um, when she's uh, the following scene. Um, after she's doing that, she's surfing on her guitar wearing the bunny suit. If you hear what she says, she actually makes a reference towards a. Di- she makes a dick joke while she's shooting with the, uh, with the, um, with a sling shooter. Yeah. Um, when she says that, I'm not. I mean, they never really talked about it, but what I understood that to be was that she actually used the piece that she pulled out of him as the slingshot. Yeah. Because that's oh, all that I he completely, could come up with. I completely yeah. missed that. Could, yeah, 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 yeah. Because she called it like it was a pun, and I heard it. I just can't remember the exact thing. But um, she, it was like, she was basically calling it like the dick slingshot. It's yeah. just, that's, I forgot what the correct term she used for it, but that was his weapon. That's all he could come up with. So yeah. she was like, fuck it, I'm going to use this it. This is all I can get. This is all yeah. I got. So she we, went and did that because she was going to, you know. Which, by the way, the first time I watched it, I didn't ever get the dick references. Right. <laughs> until, until the, like, second, no, no. Until the second time. The one I missed, the one I missed the, the worst was the big the, throbbing yeah, cock the big, that the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the one that had an actual vein that looked like a fucking like a magical chode. Uh, were, I don't even remember what happened. I just know that um, like I don't know. I don't remember what uh, brought about the dick, but um, during an episode where you know a lot of AMVs are are cut. Fully Cooly um, has been the origin of many different AMVs over the years. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. most of you listening have seen have them seen at some these point. AMVs, but um. One of the episodes where a lot of AMVs are cut, you know, during the during the gun, the little, what are they called? Where they're having the, the airsoft, with, uh, the airsoft, airsoft rifle yeah. in the uh, field. But um, there was a point where Naoto was. Who was he talking to? He was talking to his friends, Nina Mori yeah. and the uh, two no, other students. No, but who who was he talking to before they showed up? Was it just nobody? Did they just show up out of the bank? No, he um, I forgot. No, it's he was chasing Conti. And uh, they were like they were fighting, and uh, they were like running through. Uh, they ended up running through a dirt road, and at the same time, now it's his school friends are coming through on a truck, and they hit him, and mm-hmm. him and Conti end up getting thrown over to the side of the road, and they come out, and they're like, "Are you okay? Did we fuck you mm-hmm. up?" And or? he's like, "Nah, that's nothing." Yeah, you know, he's, he's like, that's okay. He's being all, you know, fuck. What, what's the word when you're? when you have a big ass he's, ego he's being really full of himself he's because of himself. people had seen him uh in the previous episode um fight off uh it was during the school he fought off nina mori's robot and then the following episode was um the baseball yes he baseball. he hit the giant rocket baseball that was heading the bomb that was heading towards town and uh so people he, had seen him so he, like they were talking about him like he was a hero and yeah everything. and he had a big head like figuratively and literally uh, apparently according to the show yeah but <laughs> i for, i don't re- like i said i don't remember exactly what brought it on but uh, at one point um what if, whenever they're talking with one of his friends i think that um haruka shows up and says something that brings about <laughs> this this like his friend's lips like drooping down and turning into this chode that like it's blaringly obvious it, it's, what it's, it's like dick. looking seeing it now it's just that they drew a dick <laughs> they, drew, they just and drew the a worst dick part was that with a big the vein in the middle i had seen it i never saw that <laughs> yeah and the scene was that um they were asking nauta if he had um stopped seeing uh mamimi and, like, if he had started hanging around with Haruko more and if they were, like, actually a couple or something like that, if, like, they made out and stuff like that. And he he start, he stops to not say anything. And then Haruko jumps in and says, yeah, we're, yeah. So after he does that, his friend, his the glasses guy, he's naturally overreacting. He, he forms a penis with his, his mouth. He gets fucking <laughs> stiff as hell. <laughs> and in uh, that scene, uh, the girl was blowing the popsicle. 
Oh, oh yeah, it's yeah, also yeah. The, there's also these, a scene where Nina where Moore is doing suggestive movements. With so the suggestive. Popsicle. There's a lot of nudity and butt shots. <laughs> I'm gonna get a figure of her. Yeah, Nina Mori. <laughs> yeah, I love Nina Mori, and yeah, yeah like uh, I always thought that there was like an underlying thing where she was always trying to force him into things because she liked him, yeah. but she was so bad at talking to people that she couldn't actually tell him anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are kids, so it like you it, know it, that's it, like that's the whole thing. Like it's these kids trying to be adults, and they you know they still act like kids, but they're trying to be adults. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, how do you guys feel about there being a second season and? I guess uh, for those of you that don't want to know anything about the second season, I've been I I read about what the uh, in quotes plot is going to be about. Mm-hmm. But um, how do you guys feel about there being a uh, a different protagonist in I, the show? I really don't mind. I feel like the original series. I'm not going to be one of those nostalgia people and say, "Oh, it it, it should have ended where it ended, and that's all we need," because the people that say that are full of shit because goddamn when fully Cooley ended people people for years have been asking for a continuation of <laughs> fully Cooley. so if you say that it doesn't need a continuation go fuck yourself but um as far as the um the continuation goes i mean it's it's with a new character and honestly i don't mind i mean i'd like to know more about like how Naruto continues especially continue or uh, considering how the manga ended but um I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, a new protagonist, that, that sounds fine to me. A lot of people might disagree because they want they also want to, see, want Nata to see Nata continue, mm-hmm. pro- maybe grow up or something like that. I don't know, but uh, I wouldn't mind that. But, I mean, a new MC doesn't really bother me all that much as long as it has the same feeling that the original did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, when I... Yeah, because watching it, I'm thinking, well, it's over. The end. The like, end. I, I never, I was never like, what what happened? I want to know more. I'm, I'm on the second season. So, I, I'm not bothered by a main character. Maybe it might be better. It might be oh, no? nice. And it I mean, might... most likely, he, Naoto might even make a cameo. Yeah. Like, he's I, most likely most, going most to assuredly make it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if not in the first core, the second. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we might like this new character. Maybe we might like this new character. It's a, <laughs> it's a girl. Uh, I don't think I told you guys, but it's a girl mm. in you know school. Ooh, well, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, original Japanese idea. Yeah, I mean, the thing of that <laughs> though is like the original series was elementary kids, so I mean, mm. yeah. And this time, uh, Haruka's gonna show up as her teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, there's that. Well, that sounds fun. Now instead of guitars, they're drums. No, they're probably <laughs> still gonna be guitar. I'm oh. pretty sure they're still gonna be guitar. <laughs> yeah. But now um, there might be some vagina jokes now. Ooh. Oh god. <laughs> I don't want any more after seeing uh, what was that other one we saw? Um, the... God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, um. What is that show called? I. But, oh yeah, it's a name that I never remember. No, like, never it remember. was a story remember. about like the all female school yeah. with the yeah, one yeah, male yeah. or like the the student or councils that... and stuff. I just. Like, I mean, I, I said it before. It was a decent show. It's just all those women jokes. It's just, it's like, yeah, they get I, disgusting after a while. And, and it's, it's like, fine. please stop. And, you know, I, you know, I like dick jokes as much as the next guy. But, I mean, you get tired of dick jokes just yeah. like you get tired of, you know, vagina jokes and, you know, tampon jokes. Yeah, well, the thing is they kept jokes. going with that. And it was just like, stop. <laughs> but they didn't. But they didn't. And you know that it, that show had its like its decent high points, but um, yeah. for the most part, it it I was a little bit tired of it after that. But you know, again, we digress. We digress. <laughs> um, I don't think there's much more to say about this anime. I mean, I mean yeah. it, it's, it's just six, six episodes. I mean, it's six yeah. episodes. I mean, and like. I'd like to say that there was other characters that we really missed out on, but, I mean, they were the really main... Like, there was other characters that showed up, but they didn't really have much story to them. The mm-hmm. only ones that... Like, the people this story was about was Naota, Mamimi, um, Nina Mori, and Haruko. Barely. Because, I mean, you don't really learn too much about her other than she's after Adamisk. And mm-hmm. she's trying to attain his powers without realizing that Naota's the only one that can actually swallow him and use his hey. abilities. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the thing about that though is that like I'd like to know more about like the dynamic between him and Naota because it really seemed like he was stuck on staying with Naota during mm-hmm. the whole thing because like he he fused with Naota just fine and like he didn't leave until Naota released him purposely because mm-hmm. he I mean but then I guess that was also a part of Naota being a kid because I mean being realistic had Naota been done the adult thing during that whole fight he would have just killed Haruko. 
yeah. versus letting everything escalate the and then way just it giving is. her a kiss because he he wants to be essentially mommied by him because he's obsessed with her yeah yeah and that's that's what it came down to and uh yeah 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 all right so this is a lot of people's introductory anime would you tell some like what do you tell the the 15 to 18 year old kid that's gonna come up to you and and be like oh man i've i've really wanted to watch uh, you know anime what would be a good a good uh you know series to watch would you recommend this yeah i I mean yeah because it introduces you to like a lot of like you're not gonna see every anime is super zany and shit like that but you will see a lot of themes that were present in fully coolly mainly because it's a parody or not really a parody it has parody themes yeah. and it it got, it disguises itself as a parody mm-hmm. um i'd say yeah because it, yeah it, it's an introductory anime in the sense that it introduces a lot of things you're going to be seeing throughout other animes mm-hmm. you're going to see like underlying themes and stuff like that you also get to notice uh budget changes and shit like that <laughs> japan's like signature style of like of saving up the budget like sapping it from one section and throwing it into the other because that's the thing that is in japan um like that's their style of like animation whereas in america it's completely different where they try to keep it all all oh, exactly like they call the they try to keep it all even yeah. which has mixed results it could look nice or it could look like shit or it's just forgettable so that's just how it is with that so i mean it, it, it's good in the sense that it introduces you to a lot of things that you're it introduces you to what you're going to expect yeah yeah so what about you, Juan? Uh, uh, the same, I guess. I mean, I don't talk to a lot of 18-year-olds. <laughs> I, I, hope you, I, I would hope you don't, because that, that could land us some jail time. That would land but us you, into jail time. But you do have relative. I mean, I assume, you, you know, you having a maybe bigger family than most people. Yeah, like well, I do. Here, here's the thing. My mom is the youngest of uh, what used to be 15 um, but now it went down to 12 and it's getting shorter. Um, so my mom's the youngest, therefore... Everyone's uh, older than you. Everyone's older than me, so I have cousins that are in their 30s already. They have children. Yeah, and so, like, I don't talk to my second or third cousins. Um, and so I can't be like, hey, do you like anime? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, even as an adult, I think this would also... Like, even mm-hmm. recommending to just adults, I think this would be a good show uh, to Especially like. seeing it now when you see, like, all these underlying, like, mm-hmm. messages. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. you could just be like, hey, watch this. And... Yeah, like, if I were to talk to people at work, the, the 30-year-olds. <laughs> the 30-year-olds. With the, 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 the other like, 30-year-olds. I'll be like, hey, watch uh, Fui Fui. I mean, the... you work in a tech company, Juan. Yeah. It's like, they're not really... <laughs> It's not like they're like the. It's not like they're gonna be not open to this idea. Yeah, yeah it's not like it's they're gonna true. be like, no, that's terrible. True. What, what kind of what, fucking man child are you? What, what am I? Why can't you be like me, kind of man child? Gonna go back and play D and D. Well, they do play exactly. Hey, exactly. See, I told you, it's what, a tech company. One of my my work buddies, um, he knows that I'm, I'm in this podcast. He's like, Juan, show me the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude. Show me the goods, man. Just, <laughs> and then, just put and them like, down. And like I would talk to him, like what we we would discuss and stuff. So he he does watch a lot of anime, and he does have a you know a a, a child. I forgot how old he is, but he does watch a lot of anime. I thought you were gonna buy. I I honestly thought you were about to say he has like a child inside of him. <laughs> 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 it's disgusting. But, but like yeah, I'm, I like since I talk to him a lot, he he's like the one I'd be like, hey, watch Puri Puri, and and if you have, well, what do you think about? It? Yeah. I gotcha. And it, as long, I'm sorry. It, as long as you don't start off somebody like, never let somebody start their anime with Black Butler. <laughs> like, don't don't do what I did and let my brother just watch whatever he's gonna watch or get recommendations from God knows where and have him start on Black Butler because that'll end up with some pretty fucked up results. And if you don't know what Black Butler is, um, more just, power to you. More power to you. More power to you. No, nah. I, I don't but know uh, what Black Butter is. No, it's, it's, uh, it's an anime. I haven't actually watched it, but I, I know it's It's a about. manga and an anime, and it's um heavily centered around yaoi themes. The main character is a uh, Wait, is a little boy, and his butler is a... Uh, <laughs> you're not, t- it's, black. He's not a Black Butler. He's not so a Black there's Butler. There's no BBC in this, <laughs> trust me. Yeah, there's no interracial shit going on. There's no interracial pedophilia going on here. Uh, I think he told me like the first time we met and we were in the Dorio Comic Con. The first time we met him, we talked <laughs> I'm about. I'm sorry, Black I fucked up. I fucked no, up. No, it's because there's a there's a guy wearing like this. Oh yeah, there like, was a guy that went in, dressed in up suit. as a in a 
as the as the butler. Thing. Yeah, and I and I was like in a suit. I was like I was like that's pretty cool. He is wearing a suit for some reason. And then you're like, yeah, there's an anime called Black Butler. I was like, oh, and like that's all you would, you told me. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we didn't go into detail, but yes, it's uh, it, it's not straight yaoi, but it's uh, it it gets pretty far in there. And yeah, it, it's the main character who's like cursed or something to be a little boy forever which mm. i'm sure a lot of, of course i'm sure some people are into but i'm not i mean i prefer lolly i'm sorry but um yeah, you want the his, thousand year old vampire exactly girls. it's fine they're 500 years old you can't tell me <laughs> shit and so yeah he's paired up with um with uh, his butler who's this tall super pale suave guy and yeah they're they're best friends if you call it that yeah, yeah they're butt buddies <laughs> <laughs> but um i have a I have a sister who's uh, 14 going on 15. Um, I feel like this will be an anime that I'd, I'd tell her to watch because we've she's interested in it. Uh, like we had a conversation earlier before mm-hmm. where I figured out that she was aware of, of Death Note because we saw Death Parade on DVD at Walmart, surprisingly. And she was like, oh, that's... Is that Death Note? And I was like, no, it's Death Parade. And she was like, oh, okay. And I was, well, and fuck I, me, no <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, fuck me. <laughs> And and I was like, how do you know about that note? And she said, oh, I saw a little bit, you know, since she has uh, my brother's Netflix account. So um, I, like, the first time I actually introduced her to something, which is, you know, I guess I could blame myself for her watching Death Note, uh, was uh, I introduced her to Madoka. And, you know, she, her and I watched it together, and I was like, all right, listen, just just watch this and get to this episode with me, and then we could stop watching it. And then, you know, she got to the part where, uh, maybe spoilers, it, it happens in like four episodes, where a blonde curly haired girl gets oh, her head bit dies. off. And then, you know, that's when you realize, oh shit, this isn't your typical, like, magical girl <laughs> anime. And, like, we watched up to that point and she was like, holy shit. <laughs> she, she was like, holy fuck. Nuni, can can we keep, you know, can you keep watching this? And unfortunately, I was like, no, it's on my hard drive and I have to take this back. Since, <laughs> you know, I didn't live, I don't live with my, my parents, or I didn't at that time. Uh, I, w- I lived in Austin, but um, I had to take it back and she stopped watching it. <laughs> but she brings up that she wants to watch it again. But I feel this would be like something that I'd recommend to her or like maybe to some of my cousins in Mexico who like <laughs> somehow like watch anime um, casually in a way. I mean, uh, they, it's like it, that's how it is in Mexico. <laughs> so really. I mean, they have a big. I feel like Mexico has a much bigger appreciation for cartoons in general. True. Than yeah, they do. I feel like or like just awesome. like like Latin countries in general have a yeah. much larger appreciation for cartoons than, than here in America. At least. Yeah, because because I remember when I went to Acuna and we were, all the festivals and carnivals and stuff. They had like the book of charms, and I had one like a necklace. Viva la Goku! <laughs> and then uh, when we went to Casa de Cultura for the summer projects. Like, there was this Japanese lady that was teaching origami, and, like, I was in that group. And uh, she saw my Goku and she's like, oh, you like Goku? I was like, yeah, I like Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I love and, it. And then, and then she was like, is, is it, you know, do people watch it here in the States? And I was like, no, but there, a lot of people in Acuna watch it. And she's like, she was, like, surprised. That, I mean, yeah. it, it's, in comparison, uh, the States have nothing on Mexico as far as love for Dragon Ball. Yeah. But, like... Dragon yeah, Ball was an introductory near. for a lot of people. Like, it's still pretty... Well, not still, but it's it's pretty big. Like, a lot of people can recall Dragon Ball mm-hmm. in America. Yeah. But if you go to Mexico, like, they may Dude, as well have... They're like, keeping a, up with Dragon Ball Super. Yeah. Dragon like, Ball they're keeping too. up with Super, and they may as well have, like, a fucking holiday for Dragon Ball over <laughs> yeah, there. They, 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 they might as fucking well have. I mean, I'm sure they, they have their fucking... They got restaurants themed everywhere. Yeah. They got that restaurants kid, yeah. and uh, knockoff <laughs> stores. <laughs> Quite my dad. <laughs> oh, which by the way, I just found out that my dad likes Mulan, the, the cartoon movie. That's cool. So he should have gone to the burlesque show with us at San. <laughs> he should have gone to the burlesque show with us at San. He'll he'll just stare at me, just frown at me, like, and you could, what are you doing? Yeah, he could be watching the same the same guy's strip for for three different songs, which you know was fine. I'd rather yeah. have seen but, him than the people that followed. Yeah. Because he he seemed like he actually entertained me. Yeah, like he was entertaining, you know, and he had I, good choreograph. I'm not gay, but that guy was pretty good. <laughs> he was good. He was, he was, he was pretty good. good. He wasn't bad. Yeah. And the people that followed, which were all women, actually, mm-hmm. were not good to like, the point where I actually walked out because I was like, you know, I came here to 
have a good time. To, <laughs> I came here to keep my buzz going. I came here to to somewhat enjoy this. And if this guy is gonna have to come out three times during the show for me to enjoy this, then to I, carry it. I'm well, just gonna, I'm just gonna take off. Well, to be perfectly like, uh, these people were amateurs. They, they were, were amateurs, amateurs, but but it was also I, the setup that bothered me because where we were sitting, if you recall, yeah. was right next to a giant speaker. speaker yeah, and um, one of the girls was decided to be inconsiderate enough to blast dubstep music. During her fucking strip show. So when she started, my, like, you know how, like, when uh, people play really loud stuff and they're like, oh, my ears hurt. I have never experienced that up until that day. (laughs) And I was so disoriented, like, that entire time. Like, I didn't even know what to do. I was just looking at everyone like, what the fuck is going on? And granted, there were some, there was, like, one or two girls that were okay. Mm -hmm. But after seeing that guy, like, like, since he, I think he was the first one that went on, probably. Yeah, he explained it. He he explained it, and then he went on, and after seeing him, like, my standards were so high, (laughs) I was like, well, these girls have to be fucking amazing, obviously. I I mean, if this is a guy, you know, most people come to burlesque shows expecting women, and if this guy is this good... You know, obviously, this woman have to be as good, if not better, and they, they weren't like like yeah. I said. There was one or two that was okay. There was there was a couple that were okay. I think the one that did it best was the girl that was wearing the the full suit. Was it this? this oh yeah, one? yeah, yeah. Like the, the was it was it like Harry Potter themes? No, she was. Was it Harry Potter? I, I think it I was Harry Potter. I thought she was Potter wearing theme. a suit suit, but yeah. now that I think about it, yeah, it I might have it, been Slytherin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like she did good, good, and I felt bad because for the first like two minutes, I couldn't tell if it was a guy or not. Yeah, and then I was like, okay, it's it's a girl. That, that's that's what Brian and I thought. We were like, it was a guy, and then like, and then like when she took off her robe and I, and I saw a chest, I was like, okay, she has boobs, and then I and I thought I was like, wait a minute, is it I, Fat Man? I, or I was like, yeah. wait a minute, I have boobs too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still in let's the give table. it a few more moments no I, I figured it out after they did the first turn because mm-hmm. I, t- I was like okay they have a feminine face yeah, so I was like, it's, it's, a, it's a girl <laughs> I mean it's still like it was just I was just trying to t- I was playing a game with this I uh, I didn't know what else to do I was just I was so annoyed by the fucking girl that played the music Toasted. I was so angry at that <laughs> point I wanted to leave but I stayed and then we left later because mm-hmm. they just they just weren't very good. I'm sorry. But um, to go back is this. This is an anime that I would recommend to my sister. That I feel that I'm pretty sure she like she won't understand the underlying themes, mm-hmm. but she will be entertained by it. Like I was when I was younger, because I was like, "Oh, this is this is so wacky and zany. It's cool." <laughs> All right. What would you guys rate this? Mm. How many? Um, how many guitars? How many dick jokes? How many how many, dick no, jokes? how many dick references out of five would you give this? Uh, well, I, you know what? I'm going to give it a four. Holy shit. The reason for that is because, uh, honestly, I wasn't expecting to watch it again because I thought that I, since I watched it in college and I remember what it was, I thought I could do this podcast. And then when we watched it last night, I was like, there's so much there's, shit. There's so much stuff there's going so on. There's so much shit that I missed. The, the first time around so I, I i don't know like i give it a four and then i give it a a, a i guess higher than average uh a rewatch than quality a- all right yeah, uh, yeah rewatchability uh i'd say four and a half uh mainly not, not just because this is like it's not my most favorite anime ever but i mean you have to give credit where credit's due it's um i appreciate like the art style I appreciate the storytelling because they did tell it the correct way. Even if you don't actually understand it the first few times or, I mean, maybe you do. It's just It depends on the point in time in your life, I guess, when mm-hmm. you actually see this, that whether you'll be able to actually understand what it's about. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I really appreciated about it was the connection and the communication between the studio and its workers. And not just the Japanese studio, but the American branch as well. Because even in the dub, they worked as hard as they can, and they made sure to be as close to the translations as they could mm-hmm. as possible. And I really appreciate that, and I feel like the studios now, while we're pumping out shit more quickly and everything's a lot more professional, 
they lack the I guess soul that this had, yeah. especially in the dub. Yeah. I this is one of the few shows that I will actually prefer the dub over. And not After... just like some of the most of the voices, they're good. It just it's some of them here and there, especially like with the uh, the school friends and like even the father. I prefer the English voice. Yeah, um, I forgot to ask that. Uh, I'm gonna give it three point five dick jokes out of out of you know five. I'd give it. You know what? Let's say it's three point seven dick jokes. Let's, circ- <laughs> let's let's circumcise that four, and you know make it a little bit smaller. But um, I forgot to ask you guys. Like yeah, the the dub. I, I you started it. Um, I guess I'll just keep going. Yeah, the it's it's one of the few shows where I'll actually say the dub is better than the than the actual than the original, because um like like you said um we we started watching it in Japanese and I was like all right you know this this is all right and it wasn't until we got to like the I guess the background characters if you will. That I was like, man, these guys just sound like they're... They sound like they're just reading their lines off a piece of paper. Like, there's no emotion or anything on there. Yeah, and at the same time, you see the character and, like, they're making all these crazy faces. Yeah, all these and gestures. And yeah, all. And, and there's just no... There's no feeling to it and it mm-hmm. just feels disconnected. Where, like, watching the du- the the dub, I was like, man, these this is pretty good. Like, Haruka's voice is kind of, uh, in my opinion, it's... Like, it's good... I prefer the Japanese one, but everybody else's voice I feel like is above what the the Japanese, you know, voice yeah. actors did. What I really liked was how I mean, it's probably just me being a weebo, but <laughs> like I I liked how like when it came to Japanese words, they would actually keep them in some cases, mm. or like when it would be the um I forgot what it was, but like it, where when they would refer to somebody, they would say senpai, but they would say it correctly, or like they when they would refer to other Japanese names, the d- voice actors would say it correctly, and they wouldn't say it in this weird like Americanized version of it, and like it's funny because some of these actors are still in the business, and now they use that weird Americanized way of saying it, and it just like it, it makes me firmly believe that they're being told to say it that way, yeah. mm-hmm. and like I'm not sure if it's either because they can't get the timing correctly if they say it correctly. Or if it's just because they fully they feel like their listeners are too dumb to actually understand what they're saying, which I mean I can understand. A lot of people don't really like they can't understand it. They mm-hmm. don't. I mean I, I shouldn't say dumb because it's offensive, but mm-hmm. like I guess they just don't. They can't understand it, so they're like, okay, we'll just say it more Americanized so people can repeat yeah, it. Yeah. Inst- instead of saying Chan, we'll just say you know little Chan. kid or little brother. Yeah, yeah. stuff like we'll, that. Instead of saying sen- senpai, we'll say upperclassman or you know stuff like that. Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. It's just I. I I really enjoyed that fact that like they actually worked pretty hard on actually pumping this out with quality. And uh, as far as rewatchability, if you've only seen this show as a teenager, um, you know, after seeing the podcast, everything's going to be even more obvious or not seeing, but hearing. I would very much recommend you going back and watching this only, only to see like how much that you actually missed. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a godly, like, oh my god, this anime is so fucking deep. It's no Ergo Proxy, it, I'll it's, give you that. Like, it, it's, it's no Ergo Proxy. It, it's, it's not like the deepest anime, but, you know, this puddle, you don't, you don't want to step on it. You don't want to step in it because you're going to get your socks wet. <laughs> but it, it right. you know, it, it's all right. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> That's going to do it for this anime. Um, just so you guys know, the next, um, uh, in the next two weeks, um, the uh, what we're gonna do for the next episode is gonna be an anime of the year, and hopefully, I'm gonna have a friend, um, not fly in or drive in, but you know, he'll be in, he'll be he'll in be the walking, Discord chat. Riding. He'll he'll walk right. He'll walk through the computer and join us, <laughs> and he'll be in the discussion for anime of the year. That um, we'll see who's gonna be in it, uh, because a lot of a lot of us don't actually keep up with anime this year, but I've I've seen enough and are gonna keep watching. You know, some to, you know, maybe talk about it with other people. And hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, if you guys want to follow us, ask us a question at all, um, you can reach us on Facebook, on facebook.com forward slash MBT podcast. On Twitter, we are MBT, uh, we are magical at magical broadcast. You can reach us at our Gmail. Um, it'll be mbtpodcast at gmail.com and we
last words, gentlemen? No, no, I, I, I think I've talked quite a bit. Yeah. Alright, I gotta take up a massive for this. <laughs> so say bye. Have a Bye bye.